Good afternoon, everybody. It's Thursday, December 7th, 1.33 p.m. Mountain Time, U.S., 2017. Coming out from the Washington Post, this article I, I thought needed covering the most accurate climate change models predict the most alarming consequences, study finds. This is getting crazy. This is the most uh, obtuse pile of nonsense and people are going to gobble this up. Look at this graph. It's amazing. Climate models that simulate the current climate the best tend to project more global warming. Look at that graph straight up. Look at how they squished it into the screen here to make it more vertical. It's amazing. It's, it's scary. We're going to tear this article apart because it doesn't say anything. It says that the climate change simulations, which are not real, that best capture current planetary conditions are also the ones that predict the most dire level of human-driven warming. According to a statistical study, this is all mathematical garbage that was uh, fabricated to spend money that has been procured for proving global warming nonsense. This is where it all comes from. So when you start with bad fake data and fake math, it's just going to get worse and worse. The study is interesting and concerning, okay? Now let's go down here. But researchers aren't very confident that the parameterizations are right. So what you're looking at is total nonsense because what they're claiming here is that clouds playing a crucial role in climate change and the albedo effect is going to cause the planet to warm. Now, CERN and Svensmark, the exact opposite happens because of cloud nucleation and cosmic ray flux. And I'm going to show you that this is not at all what it says it is because they did not use the most accurate climate change models or the most current climate change models or any actual data on actual climate change. Only data on models. It's so pathetic that this doesn't even get fact-checked by the Washington Post. Look at this. This yellow line is the observational data of global warming. Apparently. This is the global average surface temperature. And, and it's it doesn't change from 1950 to 1975 at all. It's straight. If you go look at any data set, this is not true. And then it shows from 1980 to 2000, it rises over a half a degree and three quarters of a degree till today. From 1980. Well, if we come over to the actual data from 1980 to today, there is no change within the standard deviation. Maybe I'll give you a 0.2 degrees. So what they're doing is they're taking this data point and this one and then connecting it to here and here, giving you a fake slope. This is the observed temperature <laughs> for the last 30 years. This is the least accurate article on facts ever constructed. The Washington Post is an embarrassment to science. Now, the most accurate scientific model is the coupled model intercomparison project phase six, CMIP6. And in 2007, it was the coupled model intercomparison project phase five, which is the older one. And CMIP6, the newest climate model, I'll leave you links to this. You can go over and see what it includes. It includes all the models, including the cloud feedback model, intercomparison project, including the ice sheet model, high resolution model, and the solar forcing model. I'll leave you links to the solar forcing portion here of CMIP6 because what the current models suggest, if you come all the way down to page 33, You could start to look at the projections of the total solar irradiance in watts per square meter. 
and it's showing the earth is cooling for the next 300 years. Starting now, the next 300 years will be colder than anything in modern history, according to the total solar irradiance of the sun. All of these charts, the watts per square meter, are dropping off the map. And here's the cosmic ray flux. Starting in 20, <laughs> 2022, it is going to skyrocket to levels unseen in human history. It gets worse. Sea level has begun falling in August of 2015. And yet there's, for the last two years, you've seen nothing but catastrophic sea level rise happening which is a lie. In fact, here on the NOAA graph, they still show the rate of change at 3.4 millimeters per year, even though it has been dropping for two years. And that's because if you look into it, this is an average from, 20, from 1980 to 2010. It has nothing to do with this, this data set. This is called the obfuscation of the truth. So they take the satellite data from 1993 to present. They show you three years of it and tell you the sea level's rising when it's falling. And the current climate models, the current ones showing the Earth going into a cold phase for hundreds of years based on the output of the sun. This is the mainstream. It doesn't get any more current than this data set. That's a heads up. Pope Francis is part of the problem. He says that perverse attitudes of climate change deniers, meaning those people that use data and science, are destroying the earth. I think that this is nonsense. Children in school are learning that catastrophic sea level rise is going to engulf cities when we're all about to starve from crop failure. This nonsense has to stop. You, we need to start teaching the masses about the truth about climate, climate cycles, and the sun. Because it's about to get very cold. Be safe.